is going on back at Dave to Confuse. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, let's get into it. So first off, I just want to say thank you so much for being here. We have merch. Go check out the merch on the site, Teespring, Confused Army Store. We have lots of shirts and leggings and everything, and you would look fantastic in them. So go check them out. And I try to put new stuff up there all the time. A little bit for everybody, so hopefully somebody will get a shirt and tag me in it on Twitter or Instagram. Okay, so we all know murders take place all over, everywhere, right? The worst crime you could ever do is murder somebody. And sometimes it's a pretty cut and dry case. Police are able to get evidence, figure someone out, and they are convicted guilty of the crime and thrown in the jail. But sometimes they have to think a little outside of the box in order to solve these heinous crimes. And these are some of the more interesting stories that I've seen how they caught a perpetrator in a weird murder, scandal, crime, whatever. Some of them are, are really interesting, some are kind of funny, but it's, you know, overall, these are how people were caught and convicted of these crimes. Now, because all of these are based on true stories out of respect for the people involved and the families, I'm leaving out the names of everybody because I don't want to, you know, dig up old history and, and you know, I don't want to upset anybody, I don't want to upset any families or anything, but... I want to talk about these altercations without using the names of the victims or anything like that. So the first one, this is crazy. So a man was murdered in his own home by a break-in assailant. And the man had a pet parrot, a full-grown parrot that I guess the, the pet and the owner became very, very close and when the assailant broke into his home and was fighting the homeowner, the parrot attacked the assailant. I don't know if you've seen a parrot's beak, but that thing is just a giant blade, like it's a spike. Like parrots crack nuts and they crack snail shells and crab shells and everything like that with their beak, it's extremely strong. So when this parrot attacked the intruder, he did some real damage. The saddest part about this whole crime was both the homeowner and the parrot were deceased at the crime scene. But the only reason they were able to catch the assailant is the blood and DNA off of the parrot's beak. So the parrot literally saved the... well. He was able to help catch the perpetrator that killed his owner and broke into his home. The parrot was the hero here. I've heard of cases where they find you know, DNA and blood samples under the fingernails of the deceased out of like defense mechanism where they scratch the intruder or, or a killer. They scratch them and get their skin cells underneath their nails or they bite them or they pull their hair out or something. But that was not the case. This case was the parrot attacked the attacker and wounded him in such a way that his blood was all over the parrot's beak. So next time you think, if maybe I don't need a pet in the house, it could catch your killer. You still died though, so. Okay, the second one is one of the craziest stories I've heard. So, police came across this body uh, a couple miles in the woods that was burned. As in, uh, the killer, after killing, to try to dispose of the body, took it into the forest and tried to burn it, right? And there was firewood around the body in order to kind of keep the flames going so the body would eventually become to ash. That did not work out it rained or missed it or something and it took the flames out before they could completely dispose of the body. So they took the firewood in as evidence in order to try to solve the crime. 
Now, they had a list of suspects, and one of their main suspects was like the ex or something of the female deceased victim that they found in the woods. He claimed he was at a party the entire night, and to prove he was at a party, he brought firewood to the party in order to have a bonfire and cook hot dogs and burgers and marshmallows and whatever. How they solved this crime is they took a sample of the firewood that he brought to the party and gave it a DNA and age test to the firewood that was used to burn the body. And they were established that not only was it the exact same tree species, but it was the exact same tree. Which means the fire used at the party came from the same bushel of firewood that was used to burn the body. Which puts this gentleman at the scene of the crime, doing the crime, or at least the knowledge of the crime, while being at the party. And after that, it was noticed that he did slip away from the party for about two hours before returning. So he thought he was completely in the clear, he was gonna get away with this. Unfortunately, because he used the same firewood at both situations, at both uh, party and body, he was convicted of the murder. And he confessed to the murder after being questioned by the police. But that was the only way they caught him, by age testing and DNA testing tree, a tree, a tree. I didn't like, I didn't even know that technology was available, that you could go to a tree and almost DNA test the tree and find out the age, the type, you know, when it was cut just by the amount of moisture in the, in the wood and it's crazy. Science is crazy. So... That's another crazy way that a murder was solved. Now this last one is totally nuts. And I remember, so when I went to look this up, this came up as, as one of the, the murders that was solved in such an odd way. And I remember seeing a TV show about this particular case. So a man broke into a woman's home, a single mother, and there was an altercation and he ended up killing her in her bathroom. Um, the weapon used on scene was a bladed weapon, a knife from the kitchen. After committing the murder, he wanted to take the murder weapon with him in order to leave less evidence. So he ran to the kitchen to grab a bag, like a plastic bag, and the only one he found was one full of cheap like hamburger buns. Like, you know those small hamburger buns that are almost like sponge, you know what I mean? So he grabbed that, went to the bathroom, dumped the bag on the floor. He just had the empty bag, put the knife in the bag and left. What he didn't realize is at the scene of the crime, after he dumped the buns on the ground, he stepped on one. He stepped on one of those spongy buns and he did it with most of his body weight. So the imprint of three of his toes and like the pad of his foot was imprinted onto the hamburger bun. Now, when police found the bun with the foot imprint, they kept it in evidence. And after questioning him, they did like a, almost like a footprint ink test of his foot and was able to match it to the foot that stepped on the bun at the scene of the crime. So that was part of him being convicted of the murder because he dumped the buns on the ground and stepped on one, putting him at the scene of the murder. And of course, he was convicted of the murder and they found the murder weapon, I think, you know, two or three days later in the bag that was the same manufacturer of the buns. Like, if there's any any lesson you can take from this video and these three examples, don't commit a murder. You know what I mean? Like, there, it doesn't matter how much you plan or whatever, you will be caught. 
the technology that they have today in order to catch people with murders is unbelievable. It, it's a hundred times over what it used to be in like the 80s and 90s. Like what they've accomplished in like 20, 30 years of technology, it would be impossible to get away with murder now. Like it's, it's crazy. Not worth it. So don't do it. Instead, go buy a David Confused t-shirt. That's a good compromise. Oh, thank you so much for watching my video on weird ways that murder cases were solved. I'm Dave, still confused. Go check out our merch, Confused Army. You are the best fan base on the internet. I believe it 100%. Thank you so much for being here. And uh, at least our dogs are werewolves. Okay? Peace.